In this video, what I would like to do is continue talking about free body diagrams and illustrating how to draw these free body diagrams with these three examples you see here. Now, for all of these examples, there are a couple of assumptions I will be making such that all the particles that I, all the objects I am using will be particles. And if there is any contact forces, the, the surface is going to be a smooth surface so we will be ignoring frictional forces. So let's look at example one. On example one, these are all fairly typical of problems you may see in a statics class, but in example one, what we have is we have this block that's suspended from two different, uh, from two different ropes. So let me actually draw these ropes in different colors just to uh, show that they are different ropes. So we have one rope here, we have another rope here, and we actually have a third rope that goes down. So we have these three ropes that are suspending this 10 kilogram block. And what I want to do is I want to draw two different free body diagrams. I want to draw one free body diagram of point A, so of this point right here, and I want to draw another free body diagram of block D. So let's do point A first. With point A, what is acting on point A? Well, we have these three tension forces, right? All that we have are three pieces of cable or ropes that are coming into point A. We say they're massless, so they don't actually have weight. But from point A, we know that ropes can only support tension. So because they can only support tension, we have, well, let me draw it in the same color. So we have one force that goes this way. And we'll call this some tension T, A, B, because it points from A to B. And if you wanted to, you could put in, all right, this is some angle theta. We have another rope that goes this way. That's T, uh, A, C, since it goes from point A to point C. And again, it's in tension and it also has an angle of theta. And then finally, we have this rope down here that goes from A to D. So we have rope A to D, it goes straight down and this tension, we'll call it A to D. The convention I'm using for my tensions are from where I start to where I end. So that's the free body diagram of point A. Let's look at block D. Block D, first thing we do, we draw in a simplified sketch of point D, of uh, object D, that's the crate. And we're told that it has a mass of 10 kilograms. So that means we know it has a weight force. Now we have to be careful. Our weight is equal to mass times gravity. And we need this to be in Newtons right now. We have kilograms, we don't have Newtons. So what we need to do is multiply this by 9.81. So we're gonna have 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And that will give us 98.1 Newtons. So that is the weight. The weight is 98.1 Newtons and weight always acts straight down. Okay, so that's the weight. It's not lying on a ground or any type of surface, so we don't have a normal force, but it does have this cable that's holding it up right here, this cable AD. Now, since we have a cable, it has a tension force, so it points away from my object, and I'm gonna use the same convention. I'm gonna say this is my tension DA. What is important right now is to notice this. If I cut this rope right here, this and this are the same rope, so they have the same tension. That means, since they're the same rope, T A D is equal to T D A. Same rope, one, one rope, one tension. So there you have it. That's the free body diagram of point D. Let's look at example two. With example two, first let's talk about what we have here. We have some block that is connected to a 
a spring. That spring is compressed and it's on an incline. So let's draw the actual block. We'll do the free body diagram of this block. So this is my block. Again, first thing I notice, I have a weight. My weight, again, we need to be careful. It's given to me in pounds. Well, what do I need? That means I'm in English units. I need it to be in pounds. So I don't need to do anything with this weight. Don't, by mistake, multiply it by 32.2. Don't, by mistake, multiply it by 9.81. Just, if it's in pounds, it's all set. And we know that weight always points directly down. Okay, if we're on a surface, so since we are on a surface, we also have a normal force. Normal forces, if you look back at the previous video, always act perpendicular to the surface. So that means my normal, uh, let me write this, this is my weight. So uh, the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. So that means my normal force, if this is my surface, right here, my normal force needs to be in this direction, which is perpendicular to the surface. It always acts up away from the surface towards the object. So my normal force is going to act like this. I'm just gonna call it Fn for my normal force. I don't know what the actual uh, value is. Now, the last thing I need is I have a spring force. We need to look at this spring force just a little bit. This spring force is being compressed. So that means I am pushing the spring up this way. The spring, so if I have a spring, let me draw it off to the side, and I am compressing the spring, I am supplying a force that is pushing the spring that way, pushing the spring up. The spring wants to exert a force that pushes it back towards, to get it back towards this length. It wants to get it back so it's at its original length. So my spring is going to put a force that acts to get it back to its original length. So that is gonna be downward. So my spring force force of the spring is going to be downwards. And I don't have any of these dimensions, so I can't actually figure out uh, what the, this delta S is, uh, how far the spring was actually compressed. But I know it has some K value, uh, so it's gonna be whatever, 50 times whatever it was compressed. And that will be the actual force of the spring. But in this case, it points directly down because of it being in compression and want to get in wanting to get back to its original length. Now the last thing is uh, what we know is we're at some angle theta right here. So actually this angle right in here will be angle theta. And that's just sort of a property of these inclined planes. And you can prove it with some geometry uh, you can say, all right, if I have some angle theta and I have some weight that moves down, what is going to be this angle right here? And you can see, all right, let's call this right here. Let me, let me just make this a little bigger so I don't really make it uh, too smushed. But if my weight goes straight down, I want to know what this is. <laughs> Didn't really help, but maybe this will help. This angle is gonna be the same as this angle, right there against each other. So those two angles are the same. This is a 90 degree angle, and we also know, I'll make this red, 
that this angle right here is 90 degrees. That means this angle must be the same as that angle. So that's just a property of incline planes, that the that angle will always be the same. So that, but this right here is my free body diagram of my second example. Let's look at the third example. The third example, I have this ball that's in contact with a surface and we have a spring that is stretched and we also have somehow a rope that is a rope that is over a pulley that is connected to a wall. So, okay, let's let's call this point let's call this point A and let's call this point B. The pulley is point B. I want to draw a free body diagram of A, and I also want to draw a free body diagram of B. Let's start with A. So A, I have uh, this ball. I am giving a weight. I am giving a weight of 10 newtons. Again, let's look up here. Weight is equal to mass times gravity. I need it to be in newtons. Oh, it's already in newtons. So I don't need to do anything to this weight. It, the weight is already in newtons, so the weight just points straight down. Okay, it's on a surface, it's making contact. So I do have some contact force that acts perpendicular to the surface and that's gonna be my normal force. I have a tension right here. So I'm gonna have some tension force that we'll call T A B. It points away from this ball of A. Now what's happening with this right here? Well, we have to imagine this, I, I'm telling you that this spring is stretched. So if it's stretched, that means I am pulling it this way. So I am pulling the spring that way, which means it wants to go back in the opposite direction. So my spring force is going to go back in this opposite direction because again, imagine this is my spring that has an unstretched length. This is my spring with a stretch length. My spring always wants to get back to this unstretched length. So it's pulling back towards this unstretched length. So we'll call this my force of my spring. Now, do I have anything else that acts on this? I have a weight, I have a normal force, I have a spring, and I have a tension force. So that's my free body diagram. Let's look at point B. This is a little different than this top one right here because this is just one cable. So I have this this pulley at B, this pulley thing. On this pulley, I have these two forces right here. I have one cable, so two tension forces, uh, they point away. So I'm gonna have some tension force right here and some tension force right here. And again, I didn't give any angles for this problem, so we're just sort of eyeballing it. Now, with this pulley, this we know is T, a, B, right? If we had cut this rope right here, oh, this is TAB or TBA, they're the same force because it's the same rope. Well, this is also the same rope, right? This rope goes this entire distance like this. So this is also TAB. It's one rope. One rope can only support one tension force. And if we cut it and we look at this part, if we looked at that pulley, our tension forces go away from the pulley. We'd have these tension forces that go like this. So when we're looking at the free body diagram of point B, it's exactly what we drew right here. We have uh, the tension forces that are both the same. 